the ocean off the southwestern coast of North America had an unusual tectonic configuration 50 million years ago. A small oceanic plate called the Farallon Plate was caught between the edge of the continent to the east and the vastly larger Pacific Plate to the west. The Farallon and Pacific Plates were separated by an unusual mid-ocean ridge from which new magma was emerging and spreading. The ridge was unusual because, for reasons not yet known, its overall north-south alignment was interrupted by a sharp displacement to the east that brought the southern portion of this ridge close to the southwestern coast. It probably was the subduction of the Farallon Plate under southwestern North America that caused the volcanic era in central Arizona. As the Pacific Plate continued to expand, not only was the entire Farallon Plate forced beneath North America, but also so was the eastern arm of the oceanic ridge separating the Farallon and Pacific Plates. This meant that an active oceanic ridge running north-south through which new magma was rising and spreading east and west was located beneath the American Southwest about 15 million years ago. Millions of years of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes had fractured the crustal rock in the Southwest. As magma poured through the subducted ridge underneath and spread to the east and west, the continental rock above it bulged and stretched also in an east-west direction, eventually breaking apart along fractures and other weakened areas in a north-south orientation. Geologists have documented areas in Arizona that stretched up to 500 percent during this period. Imagine a set of uniformly sized books held tightly together on a shelf. The top of the collection of books is an even horizontal line. Now imagine the pressure holding the books together is released, allowing the books to flop over to one side. This pressure release and tilting corresponds to the stretching of the land that occurred around here. After the books have tilted, the top of the line of books is no longer even or horizontal. Instead, it looks sawtoothed, or like a range of miniature mountains. This is what happened to the land, starting almost right here in the Phoenix area and extending to the south and the west. The stretched land broke apart or faulted along parallel lines running roughly north and south. Some of the areas between the fault lines fell, while others did not. The areas that dropped down became basins, while those that didn't now stood out above the basins as ranges. When this first happened, the elevation difference between the basins and the ranges might have been up to 20,000 feet. Since then, however, the ranges have been eroding and depositing sediment into the nearby basins, reducing the elevation differences to as little as 1,000 feet near Yuma up to about 5,000 feet in southeastern Arizona. This process formed the Basin and Range Province in the southwestern half of modern Arizona, clearly visible on a topographic map as parallel mountain ranges separated by valleys. Arizona is the only place on Earth where this process of crustal stretching and parallel faulting is visible on the surface. This is the process that actually created the mountains we see around us today ending just a few million years ago. The McDowells, the Phoenix Mountains, the Sierra Estrellas, the White Tanks, and others 
all our ranges created in this most recent major geologic episode. The raw material for these mountains, however, mostly is rock that's much older. So now we understand both the nature of the rock around us and also how that rock got its present form. The oldest rock in our area is metamorphic rhyolite and quartzite created 1.7 billion years ago during the formation of an ancient supercontinent. Below, or sometimes beside, this foundation rock is 1.4 billion year old granite that intruded into the older rock as magma welled up from the mantle below. Finally, 15 to 25 million year old volcanic rock rests on top of the older rock, probably having flowed or been blown here from the superstitions. Everything else, most notably whatever rocks might have formed during the almost 1.4 billion years between the appearance of the granite and the recent volcanic era is gone, eroded away. We also can outline the history of a particular rock, like the oldest local quartzite or metamorphic rhyolite, a story that stretches over more than 1.7 billion years and continues into the future. A piece of metarhyolite you find along a preserve trail today probably first appeared more than 1.7 billion years ago as thick, silicon-rich lava that cooled and solidified into rhyolite along the coast of an ancient supercontinent near the equator. About 1.7 billion years ago, the rhyolite was carried down by subduction to a depth where the temperature and pressure altered it into metamorphic rhyolite. While still deep underground, 1.4 billion years ago, the metarhyolite was intruded from below by magma swelling up from the mantle. As the magma cooled very slowly, it formed granite with large crystals underneath the metarhyolite. Portions of the metarhyolite were altered chemically in places that were close to the hot intruding magma. For almost 1.4 billion years, the metarhyolite was underground or underwater, periodically rising above sea level due to tectonic uplift or a falling sea level. Sedimentary rock probably formed on top of the metarhyolite, but then eroded away during the periods of uplift. Meanwhile, the rock was drifting northward toward its present location at about 33 degrees north latitude. The metarhyolite emerged from the water for the last time when the Rockies were formed, a process that might also have folded or tilted the land so that some of the granite that had been underneath the older foundation rock ended up beside it instead. Beginning about 25 million years ago, the area was shaken by an extended period of volcanism which deposited volcanic rocks on top of the older quartzite, metarhyolite, and granite, and also fractured the crust throughout the southwest. About 15 million years ago, an unusual tectonic occurrence resulted in dramatic east-west stretching of the crust, which faulted along parallel north-south lines. Between the fault lines, some crustal blocks subsided into basins, while others remained relatively higher in the form of parallel mountain ranges. Finally, sometime after all these other events, the metarhyolite rock was exposed at the surface for the first time in millions or perhaps even billions of years. And then you saw it beside the trail.